David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you a pen from a brand I have never reviewed, but it is a brand with familiar origins, and that brand is Scribo. And the pen of theirs that I'll be showing you today is the Feel. What I'm going to do is go over the parts and features of the Scribo feel, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to the good folks at Applebaum for providing this pen on loan for review. Uh, there will be a link in the notes below where you can see more information about this pen on the Applebaum site. Uh, Scribo is a fairly new pen manufacturer based out of Bologna, Italy. Uh, and the feel is their flagship product. The name Scribo is a combination of the Italian word for writing, which is scrittura, and bouillonese, which is not just a delicious meat sauce, it is the demonym for people who are from Bologna. Uh, the company was founded by a number of folks who used to work for the Italian pen manufacturer Omas, which is unfortunately no longer in business. Now, before I show you this pen from Scribo, I wanted to tell you a quick story about a pen from Omas that I had some issues with. Um, I had always wanted a pen made from the Omas Arco Celluloid. Uh, for a long time, obtaining this pen with this material was my grail search. And after a long search, I finally found one at a price I was willing to pay. This is the Mylord. I just love this material and love this pen. I purchased it used, and with used pens, you are never quite sure what you're going to get. And while I was very happy with this pen, and it performed very nicely, uh, from what I could tell, it was in good condition, uh, but there was an issue lurking that about three years later came to rear its ugly head. I went to ink up this pen, and the piston knob just would not turn. It had seized up. I had taken this pen with me to several pen shows and had some of the most prominent repair, repair folks in the country all shake their heads and say that there was nothing I could do. Uh, it was a combination of lack of available parts as well as the unique nature of this material. Um, I was finally able to have one expert disassemble the pen to discover the issue, which was a significant amount of corrosion behind the piston knob. The damage had just gotten worse over the years until the piston just completely seized up. I was basically resigned that my grail pen was dead and would now just be a pretty paperweight. But then I remembered Scribo and how some of the former employees of Omas were now working for them. I reached out to them to see if one of their experts could take a look at my pen. They were very nice and agreed to take a look at it with no promises that anything could be done. The parts necessary to fix the pen possibly weren't even available any longer. It was pretty much my last hope. So I sent the pen off to Italy and I crossed my fingers. A couple of weeks later, Scribo let me know that they were able to replace the necessary parts uh, for a very reasonable repair fee. Uh, my pen was now as good as new. And I was very grateful to Scribo for uh, bringing my dead pen back to life. It was very nice that they performed repairs on a pen that wasn't even theirs. And it left me with a very positive impression of the company, uh, even though I had never tried out one of their pens. But now I have the opportunity to take a closer look at one of their offerings, and I'm looking forward to sharing my thoughts with you about the Scribo feel. Um, it arrives in this box. Uh, inside the box, there is this use and care guide. It's on some nice card stock and kind of accordions out. It's kind of interesting. Uh, and then inside, we have this nice sleeve. Um, it's made from canvas and has this leather strap. Um, as well as some leather pouches. Um, there is a polishing cloth here, uh, and then room for two pens, and the pen comes right out. Now, a lot of times things like this that are included with pens are things that I would feel are uh, too nice to throw away, but not really something I would use. So they just kind of get thrown in a drawer, which is full of stuff like this that I have. But this sleeve uh, here is of nice quality, and I can see myself getting some use out of that. And here we have the pen. Uh, this is the Scribo Feel. Uh, more specifically, this is the Guri Giorno, uh, which is, translates from Italian to mean gray day. 
Uh, this pen is made from a gray resin with gold trim. Uh, each pen is turned by hand from a single bar of resin. Uh, both the cap and barrel have 12 facets. Um, I care for this material a lot. It's not just a flat gray. The material has a fair amount of pearlescence and chatoyance. Depending on the angle the light hits it, um, it really adds some life to this material. The facets are meant to invoke the image of a Doric column, with the curvature of both the cap and the barrel representing entesis, which is a slightly curve in the shaft of a column, which kind of corrects for a visual illusion of columns being concave. Let's take a look at the cap. Uh, the finial is gold and laser engraved with a quilled feather. Beneath that, we have a rather thick and wavy clip, which is firm but functional. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the cap as well as the barrel are a bit bulbous, being thickest at the center and then tapering off in either direction. Uh, at the end of the cap is a gold band. On it is the company name, Scribo, as well as their company slogan, Feel the Writing. Now, having the slogan on the band does feel a little bit cheesy, but I don't find it to be too egregious. There are far worse pen crimes out there. Maybe that would be a video one day, uh, pen crimes. Uh, feel free to leave a comment in the notes below as to what you feel are some of the worst pen crimes. The barrel angles up before tapering back down, and at the end there is a gold band signifying the beginning of the piston knob. And then on the end of the knob it says Scribo in Italy. The cap unscrews in a little over one rotation, and underneath you have this very nice 18 karat gold nib. Uh, Omas had some fantastic nibs, and as you'll see in the writing sample, I find the nib on this Scribo to be outstanding as well. On it is engraved with the company slogan again, Feel the Writing. Uh, this nib is available in a wide variety of options. There are also some 14 karat gold options, as well as the 18 karat gold, uh, as well as some flex options. And here's a look at the low profile ebonite feed. I really like the looks of this feed. That low profile look is one of my favorite feed designs. The section begins with a slightly raised gold band. The section angles up slightly, about a millimeter from beginning to end, where we have the cap threads and a rather steep step up to the barrel. Something unique about this section is that it is faceted as well. Um, most pens with faceted exteriors don't extend that design element into the section. Um, I did have some concerns about that, that it, uh, how it would work in regard to a writing experience and if the facets would force your grip into a specific position on the section, which wouldn't be the most conductive for my writing style. But I find that even if my natural grip rests on the crests of the facets rather than the flats, then I still find it comfortable and I don't find the pen moving around in my hand at all. So my concerns were unwarranted. For me, it works just fine. Um, the feel is not designed to post, which is fine. Um, I find this pen plenty long enough to use without the cap being posted. I mentioned the piston knob before. The feel is a piston filler, and I find the piston mechanism to feel very solid uh, while you're operating it. The Scribo feel is the flagship pen for the brand, and it does come at a flagship price. From the Applebaum site, it retails for about $675, depending on the conversion rate and whether or not you have, you're required to pay, pay the uh, VAT tax. I feel that this is a very solid pen. Uh, it feels like a quality writing instrument, and I find that the price point uh, is appropriate for what you receive with this pen. Uh, I do like the unique elements of the pen. Uh, you'll see in the writing sample, uh, but the nib performs very well. Um, I love the looks of that ebonite feed, uh, and the pen overall has some unique looks to it with the facets as well as the curvatures. But there is a lot to like about this pen, so it's worth checking out. Okay, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. some size comparisons for the Scribo feel. You know what, I wanted to give you another look at the material here uh, in some kind of close-up light and you can really kind of see how there's some sh nice chatoyance and variance in that material. It looks really nice. Uh, I mentioned that this is their flagship pen, so in regard to some flagship pens for some other luxury pen manufacturers, 
here it is with a Pelican M1000. And here it is with a Mont Blanc 149. And here it is with a Sailor King of Pen in Ebonite. And in regard to some other pens, here it is with a Parker Dual Fold Centennial Big Red. Uh, then this is uh, another Omos that I own, which is the uh, Ojiva Cocktail. Uh, and then finally, the one that I showed you earlier, which is the uh, Mylord in the Arco Celluloid. And I can never get enough of looking at this material. That material is just spectacular. And in regard to some uncapped comparisons, uh, this is what it looks like with the Mont Blanc 149. And here it is with the Pelican M1000. And finally, here it is with that Sailor King of Pen in Ebonite. And here we go with the writing sample for the Scribo Feel. This is a fine 18 karat gold nib. And the ink that I'm using today, appropriately enough, is Omas Blue. This is what the ink looks like. It's a nice, solid, saturated blue. Uh, you know, I only have one bottle of Omas ink. I wish I had more. Um, it, this is what it looks like in regard to the Visconti blue. Again, it's very similar and saturated. Uh, not quite as saturated as something like Noodler's Liberty's Elysium, uh, but still the Omas blue is very nice. This is what the bottle looks like. Uh, it's an interesting design. Uh, you, the, with the facets, you could actually set the bottle on its side like this so that you can be at the uh, angle while you're filling it. Uh, so it's kind of a cool design. As I said, I wish I had more Omas ink bottles. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. As you can see, this fine nib has a great deal of flex to it. There is a large amount of flex that you could get out of this nib. Um, it, and it's fairly smooth with just a little bit of feedback. I, I, looks like I, I ran it dry there for a second, really pushing it. But you can start very thin and get a fairly decently wide line there. Um, the, this is a very generous nib in regard to ink flow and in regard to reverse writing um, it is a little scratchy but it gets the job done gives you a nice extra extra fine line and in regard to some fast writing The, the feed kept up just fine. Um, it ran a little bit dry there when I was really pushing it, but other than that, it, it uh, performed really, really well. And this uh, fine nib uh, is very pleasant. So here we have the Scribo feel. Um, as I mentioned before, I really hadn't had an opportunity to check out any Scribo pens, uh, and I like this one a great deal. I think that it is a quality writing device, uh, and I'm going to be uh, very much looking forward to checking out more Scribo pens in the future. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.